In probability theory, two events R and B are conditionally independent given a third event Y precisely if the occurrence or non-occurrence of R and the occurrence or non-occurrence of B are independent events in their conditional probability distribution given Y. In other words, R and B are conditionally independent given Y if and only if given knowledge that Y occurs. Knowledge of whether R occurs provides no information on the likelihood of B occurring. A knowledge of whether B occurs provides no information on the likelihood of R occurring. Formal definition. In the standard notation of probability theory, R and B are conditionally independent given Y if and only if or equivalently. Two random variables x and y are conditionally independent given a third random variable z if and only if they are independent in their conditional probability distribution given z. That is, x and y are conditionally independent given z if and only if given any value of z. The probability distribution of x is the same for all values of y and the probability distribution of y is the same for all values of x. Two events R and B are conditionally independent given a sigma algebra a sigma if where denotes the conditional expectation of the indicator function of the event. Given the sigma algebra, that is, two random variables x and y are conditionally independent given a sigma algebra a sigma if the above equation holds for all r in sigma and b in sigma. Two random variables x and y are conditionally independent given the random variable w if they are independent given sigma. The sigma algebra are generated by w. This is commonly written, or this is read, x is independent of y, given w, the conditioning applies to the whole statement, given w, if w assumes a countable set of values, this is equivalent to the conditional independence of x and y for the events of the form, w equals w, conditional independence of more than two events, or of more than two random variables, is defined analogously. The following two examples show that xy neither implies nor is implied by xy, w. First suppose w is 0 with probability 0 0.5 and 1 otherwise. When w equals 0 take x and y to be independent, each having the value 0 with probability 0 0.99 and the value 1 otherwise. When w equals 1, x and y are again independent, but this time they take the value 1 with probability 0 0.99, then x, y, w. But x and y are dependent, because p r less than p r. This is because p r equals 0 0.5, but if y equals 0 then it's very likely that w equals 0 and thus that x equals 0 as well, so p r greater than 0 0.5. For the second example, suppose x, y, each taking the value 0 and 1 with probability 0 0.5, let w be the product x times y, then when w equals 0, pr equals 2 thirds, but pr equals 1 half, so x, y, w is false. This is also an example of explaining away. See Kevin Murphy's tutorial where x and y take the values brainy and sporty. An example, the discussion on stack exchange provides a couple of useful examples. 1. Let the two events be the probabilities of persons A and B getting home in time for dinner. The third event, C, is the event of a snowstorm hitting the city. While both A and B have a lower probability of getting home in time for dinner, the lower probabilities will still be independent of each other. That is, the knowledge that A is late does not tell you whether B will be late. However, if you have information that they live in the same neighborhood, use the same transportation, and work at the same place, then the two events are not conditionally independent. 2. Conditional independence depends on the nature of the third event. If you roll two dice, one may assume that the two dice behave independently of each other. 
Looking at the results of one die will not tell you about the result of the second die. If, however, the first D's result is a 3, and someone tells you about a third event, that the sum of the two results is even, then this extra unit of information restricts the options for the second result to an odd number. In other words, two events can be independent, but not conditionally independent. Uses in Bayesian inference. Let P be the proportion of voters who will vote, yes, in an upcoming referendum. In taking an opinion poll, one chooses on voters randomly from the population. For I equals 1, N, let she equals 1 or 0 according as the ITH chosen voter will or will not vote, yes. In a frequentist approach to statistical inference one would not attribute any probability distribution to P and one would say that X1, Xn are independent random variables. By contrast, in a Bayesian approach to statistical inference, one would assign a probability distribution to P regardless of the non-existence of any such frequency interpretation, and one would construe the probabilities as degrees of belief that P is in any interval to which a probability is assigned. In that model, the random variables x1, xn are not independent, but they are conditionally independent given the value of p. In particular, if a large number of the x's are observed to be equal to 1, that would imply a high conditional probability, given that observation, that p is near 1, and thus a high conditional probability, given that observation, that the next x to be observed will be equal to 1. Rules of Conditional Independence A set of rules governing statements of conditional independence have been derived from the basic definition. Note, since these implications hold for any probability space, they will still hold if one considers a subuniverse by conditioning everything on another variable, say k, for example, would also mean that. Note, below, the comma can be read as an and. Symmetry decomposition proof. A similar proof shows the independence of X and B. Weak union proof. By definition, due to the property of decomposition, combining the above two equalities gives, which establishes, the second condition can be proved similarly. Contraction proof. This property can be proved by noticing each equality of which is asserted by and respectively. Contraction weak union decomposition putting the above three together, we have intersection for strictly positive probability distributions. The following also holds. The five rules above were termed graphoid axioms by Perl and Paz because they hold in graphs if is interpreted to mean all paths from X to A are intercepted by the set B.